All right, now to the next segment of the Gale Force Pro Data Machine. Uh, we're going to be showing you uh, how the software works that comes with the program when you purchase a Pro Data from us. If you've already purchased the Pro Data from us, sometimes they're seeing us at a trade show. Uh, we do a little bit of a quick demonstration, but this is uh, going to be more of a detailed demonstration on how the, the software works. Um, Basically, we're, we're using the same shock and spring as what we've been using in all the previous segments. We have a determined uh, preload uh, at 18 inches. We know what our travel is going to be at 3 because we've been working with it. Now we're going to see what it looks like, what the curve looks like uh, on the pro data on the software. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and open up our software. Uh, it's called Gale Force Force Distance. When it pulls up, the first thing you want to do is, is you want to hit connect right here in the top left hand corner. We want to hit connect. It shows us that it's found the hardware. So everything's connected, our USB cable's connected from our box to our computer. Everything's all hooked up. First thing we want to do when we get ready to make a test is we're going to go to new file. <clears throat> We'll call it Gale Force 101 Demo. When that file is set, we'll go ahead. We're zero at 18 inches. Whatever the whatever the box is showing here is what it's going to show on this graph. As you can see here, we've got our travel per inch and then we have our force. So obviously at 826 pounds of load, that's where this original graph right here will show. We'll go ahead and click start on our software. The screen will turn blue when the software is connected and ready to run a test. So we're ready to run the test. I'm going to go ahead and run it up to three inches of travel. See as the shot's coming up on the test, it's showing us live on the screen here what we're seeing. <clears throat> Three inches of travel, 200 and 291 pounds. We actually spiked at 2307. Uh, one time there at 3.016 is the travel. So when we get done running the test up, we want to hit stop. We're done. And then we're going to see results. When we click on see results, the software automatically put it over into Microsoft Excel for us. And we can see our graph here. You can highlight it with your mouse cursor to see exactly what you want to see if you want to see a number. Right here, particularly this point that I picked up was less than 60 thousandths in. We're showing 863 pounds. And our final load is at 3 inches. Let's go back on that cursor one time and be sure they pick up how it does that. So you can move it at whatever, 16th or wherever you want to look at it. Put it to your peak where it gets on the bump. Okay. What does that say right there, son? We're showing about 2 and 5 eighths on our air gap before it starts touching the bump, a total load of 1160 pounds. So at two and five eighths, we're starting to get on our stop, on our shock, and our final load in that last little bit of travel, three eighths of an inch, we're showing uh, 2,271 pounds, um, anywhere between 2,200, 2,300. Another thing you can do is you can come over here after you look at your graph and you can see the exact exact force on your data page at the bottom tab you got graph and then data right here at the bottom we started out at 826 pounds and here is your actual force at every sixteenth of an inch so you started out at 826 our graph we started getting on the bump at two and five eighths 
scroll it all the way up to where we started getting on our bump right here, 1160, just like we showed on our graph. And then the final number at three inches of shock travel, which we're assuming that's about what we're going to travel at the racetrack for this particular shock and spring setup that we have. Three inches of travel, we're showing 2,271 pounds. Now, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is we're done with that test. We're going to lower it back down to our original start point of 18 inches. Always go past it and back up to it a little bit. Another thing too is always good to do when you come back to your number is always reset your zero on okay. your on your distance. Go ahead and open it back up while we can change it. We're gonna make a packer change is what we're doing here. So we're gonna open the spring up where it's easier to get to. We kind of closed it. Okay. Basically, um, that we had, we had like a big packer in there. Basically, that packer we had in there was an, uh, a half inch thick packer. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to change it by basically only an eighth inch to show you the difference. Okay? You look at that. Look at them three together. That's basically an eighth inch change. This measures three eighths of an inch. So we're pulling an eighth of load out of it basically. Okay? So I'm going to stick these three in. Half out, three eight back in. <clears throat> now we're done making our packer change. Always like to, before I get into my software, it's always real good to get back to your starting point. So we're gonna get back to our starting point. And know that we're making an identical change here. zero our distance there. We're back to within two pounds on our start point. We're showing 829. And we'll go back to the software here. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is uh, minimize our last test. Go back to force distance. I'm going to open up another one. Going to go back through the same thing as we did before. Connect. I had two, two programs opened at once, so it didn't like to read my hardware there. All right, so we connected, made our packer change. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to new file. I'm going to go Kel Force 101 demo minus 8 packer. Okay, everything looks good. We're back to our start point, 826, dead on the money. We're going to start out, screen turns blue. Going to do the same thing, go to three inches here. Went back to three inches. 
as you can see that we lost uh, about relative 300 pounds of load in that travel. We're done with our test, we went back to the same max travel. I'm gonna hit stop. Screen turns back to green. We're gonna see the results, see what our graph looks like. Everything looks good. Um, we can see that we moved our curve over to where it starts to hit the bump stop. Right around uh, two and seven eighths. So that's about uh, what we changed there on our on our packer. Our air gap changed about an eighth an inch. We opened it up and uh, lost a little bit of total load, which that's what we want to see. Uh, the next step that I'm going to show you guys is we're going to overlay these two graphs together so we see what we have.